Testing one, two, three. Amy, see me? That's right, would you wait? Uh, hi, this is uh, Brian from Aquacoat. Today we're going to talk about our Aquacoat white cabinet grain filler. And uh, we're going to discuss on how you use it. We're going to discuss how we came up with it. And uh, we're going to discuss the differences between the white and the clear and how the white will be much better when painting your cabinets. Okay. So Aquacoat white cabinet grain filler is made to fill the grains and pours and seal the grains and pours on your cabinets or on your vanities or on your kitchen tables or doors, whatever you want to paint over, right? It's for like hard to fill woods like oak, walnut, and birch. And you can see in here, this is just a panel, a demo panel that was grain filled and not grain filled. You can definitely see the difference. Okay, so that's what we're trying to attain. Okay, so the grain filler is water-based, eco-friendly, non-flammable, non-combustible, low odor, low VOC, fast drying, easy sanding, water cleanup. It also has a shelf life of greater than one year and it passes three freeze thaw cycles. Okay, so today during our demo, we're going to um, have uh, questions and the answers uh, going on and you can also win a free court. We're gonna give away two free courts and uh, an applicator. It comes when you purchase through our website, which right now we have free shipping on grain fillers, pints and quarts. And when you purchase it, you'll get an applicator along with your purchase. Okay, uh, so the method of application would be, you would clean your existing cabinets with a little bit of Dawn and hot water or whatever you're trying, you're gonna paint over. You wanna get off the grease and you um, scrub them a little clean, okay? Then you let that dry and then you would sand them to like a 150 or a 120 um, grain. You don't want them, you don't wanna sand them to 400 because you close the pores up so much that the particles won't get in there and fill and seal the grains and pores. Okay, the objective of the pore filler and grain filler is to seal the grains and pores. The particle size is very, very small. That's why it has to be forced in. And then those go in there and they block whatever you put on top of it. Less of it will be minimum, uh, minimize, will make less stuff be absorbent. Um, so the demo would be you'd prep your cabinets like that. You'd Then you'd sand them to like a 150, then you'd remove the dust. Don't use pack rags. Um, they have oils and waxes. Don't use those big bags of uh, at Home Depot and Menards. To, those will have oils and preservatives in them to give them a longer shelf life. Um, that will repel water-based products, okay? So you're going to grain filler, right? It's a gel, it's easy to control, no waste. Okay, so you, you'll be able to see how it really pops out, right? This is a board, board was sanded. You can see how it shows where it is, right? How it's deep in those grains. Okay, and that's exactly what we're trying to accomplish, right? We don't wanna put really thick coats on and build it up. We're trying to build it down into the pores and into the grains, okay? Now, I have another board here that I put a coat on earlier, right? You can see how it kind of um, already kind of like lost its um, brightness like this one. 
it's because the tannins on the wood have kind of bled through and we'll go over that a little later and it kind of um, brings a brownness to the color okay I'm going to sand this with a 320 That's all you need wipe off the dust take the filler we're going to apply it to the whole board so you can see the difference between one and two coats. This isn't necessarily going very well, but. And you can kind of see where there's that second coat where it's more filled. Okay. So you would apply your first coat, let it dry an hour or two, lightly scuff sand it, apply a second coat as per the instructions. You want to apply that first coat, you want to force it in and leave it thin. And then you want to apply the second coat, um, the same method. Uh, we recommend you uh, try a, um, a sample board. You could do the back of a drawer front. It's a great um, demo piece. Contractors will do that. They'll, the customer will say, well, I want to paint the cabinets. I'm not sure. And the customer or the contractor will ask, do you want the grains filled or not filled? And they say, well, I don't know what's the difference. So he'll take the drawer back and he'll, on the back of a drawer, he'll fill one side and not fill the other, just like my demo board, and paint it prime it and paint it and show it to the customer and the customer will more than likely choose the grain filled part okay contractors can only get about 80 percent 85 percent filled uh, on their own there's kind of no real way except for like bondo or wood putty which is nasty to use and we'll go over that in a little bit okay so you would sand it apply a second coat if you decide you need a third coat and you're testing right apply a third coat after you've applied your last coat, you want to let it dry overnight. It is a water-based products, water-based product. Water-based products will have a little bit of evaporation. Any questions? Nope, I have. No questions yet. Hey, we're open to questions. Um, they'll have water-based. Um, they'll uh, lay on top of each other, so you need to scuff them in between coats, and they'll have a little bit of uh, absorption or shrinking, very small. So if you put your final coat on, you want to let it set overnight before you apply your primer and your top coat. You do not want to sand that final coat. Let that dry as long as you can. And you want to sand it immediately before you start your primers. You do want a tannin blocking or a stain blocking primer. Okay. You could see how that turned a little bit of, um, a little bit of brown, right, and not that much time. So what happens is there's a tan in, in the grain filler, an oil, and it will, um, it will once the grain filler's on it, it'll wet the oil and it'll kind of bleach through or bleed through. It doesn't necessarily always happen. It usually happens, uh, mostly with oak. You need to seal that in. So you want to put the grain filler down first so you can see where you put it and where you didn't put it. We originally came up with the grain filler because we have a clear which is very nice and it's used on musical instruments, it's used on tables, pianos, uh, ukuleles, guitars. Um, and they love it because it's extremely clear and easy to sand and all the other attributes. But it is very clear and a problem to people that don't understand woodworking that it's so clear that you can't see it. So people started asking us if we can make this white and they could see it and they thought it would work better because they'll be more successful. So they are more successful by uh, being able to see it, okay? Um, so we created the white after many people asking, <laughs> why don't you just make this white? The white will be higher solids. The white has better adhesion and the white has more visibility. So all of those will make it perform better for you uh, in less coats, okay? Um, so after you've applied your last coat, you want to apply your primer. You want to stain blocking primer so the tannins don't bleed through. Um, and that will happen the majority of time. And it may not happen in five minutes. It may not happen in five days. But on the most part, 
little bit if you put a stain blocking primer over, uh, that will work fine. You want to put, you know, probably one to two coats of primer and two coats of paint. You do want to um, do a demo board on the back, like I said, right? And that's how you attain. Look, the difference there. Okay. Why would I use the grain fuller instead of something else? Okay. Why not just use wood putty or joint compound? Wood putty is clay based. Okay. The grain filler is acrylic based. Acrylic, like in paint, has a little bit of bend. Clay, as in like pottery, has a more of a crack. So it, it can crack with a clay based product. And it also is nastier to sand and a lot messier. This sands to a very fine, easy finish. That's almost dry, and I applied that not that long ago. Uh, hey, Brian, I have a question from Tammy. Hey, Tammy, good day. A good day. How many coats are typical on raw maple compared to raw red oak? Uh, probably uh, maple's a little bit less. The red oak uh, is very uh, grainy. So I would, you know, two coats probably is enough on maple. I would definitely run that test on the back of the board. Um, you know, or a scrap piece or the back of a drawer when you're testing. Um, going on, uh, what types of primers? We discussed that as a tannin blocking or stain blocking primer. Why would you grain fill before painting? Because you want to get that glass smooth finish, right? Um, because if you don't grain fill it or if you don't get a glass smooth finish, that will forever continue to absorb dirt, dust, grease splat or whatever because you can see them from a, a long way away uh what happens if somebody uh, already painted their cabinets and they don't like the grain grainy look very common we get a lot of this question so a lot if your paint has fully cured so which most paints take 10 20 or 30 days you can scuff sand it with a 220 probably apply one coat of grain filler Right, then a coat of primer and one or two coats of paint, and then you'll have a smooth surface. You can, again, if you're questioning if that's going to work, I would recommend on one of your existing doors that you already painted, running that test if it get, you get the desired look. You always want to run a little test, then you, you'll have a lot less surprises, and it'll save you time in the long run. Um, how much do I need? Okay, so this is a pint. Do two, three, four vanities, two, three coats, no problem. Okay, a small kitchen, 15 doors and drawers and sides and everything. The exterior of the cabinets, two coats, no problem. This is a court. This will do probably 80% of the kitchens in America, two coats. Okay, it goes a really long way. 35, 40 doors and drawers, 45 doors and drawers, two coats. This, this is usually enough. Okay. So contractors, uh, we contractors, we kind of designed this with a contractor and his question was, he was trying to figure out how to adjust his bid because it does take time to do. So he had done the door, the drawer back and took it to his customer. And they said, what's the difference? On his first one, he said it, it would be 25% more, right? So he charged 25% more to fill the grain, okay? and Eventually, he raised his price to 30% more because uh, it took, he was trying to maintain the same margin he had with the time and materials. He didn't fill the grain, so that's why he went to 30%. So does humidity and temperature affect the application of the grain filler? Yes, it's a water-based product. If you apply, if it's, you don't want to apply it when it's below 60 degrees and you don't want to apply it above, Above 90. You don't want 100% humidity. All of these things uh, greatly affect water based products. So you want to apply it like 70 degrees and 40 or 50% humidity, ideally. That will be, other than that, you need to, you need to um, fluctuate on your dry times and um, your cure times. And if you ever think you're, you're, you're dry and you sand it and it clogs up your sandpaper, you're not dry. So you need to wait till that fully dries. You can put a fan on it. Um, to help it dry faster. Uh, dry time is about an hour in 70, you know, 70, 50 or 70, 40, which is 70 degrees humidity or a little bit warmer and 
45 or 50 percent. Do not put it out in the sun to try to dry it. It will be very messy. It'll actually bubble. So, um, yeah, Christy, you have a, a contestant? No, um, yeah, how about uh, Tammy? Tammy, For Tammy. Great question. We will uh, send you a quart of the grain filler if you can email us at sales at aquacoat.com with your name and your address. We will send one out today or tomorrow. Hey, thanks, Tammy. Thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, participating. Uh, anybody have any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, if any questions that you have, please send to sales at aquacoat.com. Yep. If you're not able to do it on the Facebook Live, this will also be on YouTube in a day or so. Um, yeah. So that's basically it. Shelf life greater than a year passes three free thaw cycles. Um, there's a link also in the description for you to order it if you go to aquacoat.com. Um, there's a link and you can order it. You get a free free shipping on it and a free yellow applicator included with it. Yeah, at aquacoat.com. Um, and that ships out pretty much the same day all the time. Um, and yeah. That's it. All right. Any questions, feel free to contact us outside here at sales at aquacoat.com.